if men opened the boardroom doors and quote unquote the wrong women were in. They'll shut them again for like a hundred years. Yeah. <laughs> and it's only because the, 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 it's not something they know yet. Now we've got lots of great examples of companies where it does work really well and you can take Branson and Virgin, Sarah Blakely I follow a lot, you know, there, there are companies out there that are really, and the younger ones, Google, Yahoo, you know, these kind of younger industry sectors where um, I know with uh, Google for sure, there's, there's an ethos about, yes, you can have a baby, you can have another baby and, you know, the, the policies are very friendly and it's a conversational culture. And interesting, if you do read about um, General Motors, Mary Barra has, since 19, uh, 2014, <laughs> introduced a conversational culture there. And more obviously more women at the top. Now, not every company can get hold of that um, conversational culture. So let me just show you how that map works. You need to know where you are in it. So for all of you, apart from you, you're in the circle, okay? Are you clear about that? I'm just assuming. Yes. And I'm not talking about any sexual interpretation. This is just about behavior and biology. So the idea is that we can, we can act in assertive ways, but generally, and this is studied right back from Mars and Venus and, and lots of psychologists who've studied this, we, have a, we get our jobs done through relationship building and nurturing. Is that okay? Yeah, um, and men are getting more in tune with their emotions in the boxes they're in, but they generally task and, and, and that's why I'm saying So when we ask a question that sounds like a request for a solution, a man will decide to give you that answer and you'll be going, no, no, I didn't ask that. And you'll have conversations almost with yourself, which men will assume need them to go and find you a solution and that should be easily done. Have you come across that? I have that with Jim all the time, it's quite funny. I, I keep on now saying, I have it with I'm my not son asking. every day. Yeah. I, I, it sounds like a question, but it's not it's listening so an answer. True. It's okay. It's rhetorical. It's, it's rhetorical, right. rhetorical. Yeah. yeah. I think I think after seven years you would have oh, no. got the hang of that, but anyway. Years. It's our second, it's our the seventh anniversary of our second wedding today. Oh, yes. Because we got married twice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so anyway, so what this is, is a very logical way of doing something which is quite complex. So up here, generally, the masculine energy is logical. So as well as being male, we have something called the masculine energy. It's more spatial process thinking. And down here, we've got intuition, verbal dexterity. And these are kind of, the extremes of masculine and feminine behavior. Now, are all men the same? No, no. Are all women the same? No, no. And that's where I started studying this, because I wanted to understand why I was a more masculine-minded woman than my sister, my mm -hmm. real sister, who is more feminine-minded. And I was observing this when I was an image consultant in terms of body structure and bone structure. So I'm not talking about flesh weight, I'm talking about bone structure. And I always stand like this. I can't stand like that, and I can't, and it's like, if you go on the red carpet, this is what you do. I watch them all and they go, <laughs> <laughs> and I watched this in California, and I, I tried it one time, and I felt really challenged by that photo, but it looked very good on the photograph. <laughs> but anyway, it's about bone structure, so let me carry on. There were different types of men, so let's start with men that you know. Do you all know the very masculine-minded man as opposed to the fem feminine-minded man? It's not to do with sexual orientation. Feminine-minded man is more likely to talk about his feelings and his emotions. He might go shopping with you. Masculine-minded man is the inner box. I'm right. Yes? You would not want to be political. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, Piers Brosnan over Tom Hanks. Can you visualize those two guys? Mm -hmm. The Tom Hanks is, is just that bit softer mm -hmm. and interesting enough, he always plays those kind of tough guy but intuitive roles. Mm -hmm. Well, it appears to us, it tends to find he plays that kind of the tough, um, the suave. Right, James yeah. Bond. Okay, so if we put the what I'm calling the feminine aspects onto that, and you might call Nelson Mandela down here as well. 
then the same is true over here. So that's where I found myself because I thought, right, this is great. Now remember, this is about coming to the table for conversations. So here I found myself, I thought, oh, this is great because I'm definitely a female. I know I'm a female and I've definitely got all this menstrual stuff and <laughs> feelings and all this stuff. But I had that logic kind of thing. So you understand that, okay. Kate. Yes, definitely. So down here, this is our more feminine female and we're quite different. Now I'm going to surprise you by telling you that Margaret Thatcher was actually here. Wow. And everybody always said, but Margaret Thatcher was such a iron, iron, iron lady. Fist. But she had a lot of traits of being very queen bee. So I'm talking about the extreme characteristics, as opposed to somebody like Chancellor Angela Merkel. Do you know her? Sure. Mm -hmm. Who is up here? Yeah, she's sure. So I'm just giving you that as a visual. It could be Jamie Lee Curtis and Meryl Streep. I mean, I've got some <laughs> illustrations to show you. But what we're looking at is behavior and how do we come to the table? So if a magical conversation is one where we are open-minded to flow and possibilities, who is the character that's least likely to be involved in that conversation? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> this guy. This guy can do more conversation, although, again, he's still male. And this is where most of our world leaders are, so let's just put that in the bag there. So we're actually much, much better at conversation, generally. And that's the thing is that women do, because we work by relationships, then conversation is something that we do, is we're relationship builders. And actually, if you observe, even in the entrepreneurial field, so where would you put somebody like Tony Robbins? Somewhere in the middle. In the middle. You see, I would say he's up here. Personally, because he's very, he's actually very, I mean, he's very enlightened. So that's another aspect of it. I think it's also, um, you know, these are very primal things because since time immemorial, women have been the storytellers. So we had written history, right? So we could sit around the fire and tell stories. We were always sort of the oh, ones who nurtured that. So this is, when you re-imprint and you reprogram, you know, like Pauline said earlier, there's no sense beating yourself up about things. You have to be gentle with yourself because this is something that's hardwired in us. That's right, and, and it's really important that there's an enlightenment overlay on this. Sure. So these guys, we're, we're somewhere on there. That's the thing. And if you're a woman, you're here. Now, if you're, if you're transitioning from male to female, and I've worked with lots of trans clients, then you move around the circle. There is actually a 360 degree look at this. So let's have a look at what might happen if we overlay that conversation. Now obviously there's bits in the middle where the intelligent and gentle guy, the Nelson Mandela, he's very wise, he's talking, you, you know, you might have characters that go in there. And you've got tough women who actually speak in, in uh, maybe more assertive ways, but we still have that baseline. So for instance, if we take the underpinning that generally men do tasks, women do relating. The proposition I have for the world on these magical conversations is that we need both of these elements now. So how do we have a conversation with men and men with women that we understand that all of this makes the whole? Because no longer do we live in the cave. We don't go, the men don't go down the mine and we don't sit at home shoveling the food on the stove and all that stuff. But the world is now full of us doing everything together. And even since when, since I was a kid, it's even more and more so. So we can, it's something, stats like 95% of what we do, we can all do. Because we all use computers and we all sure. use this and we, we can do it all. But underpinning that, as Mimi says, is I don't, we, we had to knock on all the doors to get through, to get the vote, to get this, to get that, but we don't need to do that anymore. We need to understand the value that we bring to the whole, yeah? so. For instance, if you've got the masculine male and he happens to be the, the guy at the top of the business, so he's right and he's in charge, isn't he? But he might want to have all these different characters around the table, hopefully, and he's got to manage 
several elements. He's got to manage the other men. He's also got to manage the women coming in, but he may be thinking, yeah, I do really want this mixed management team, this mixed board. And my proposition is, this is my passion, is to help them get there. So how does it impact you in your life? Is to think about your home relationships and your retired relationships or your business relationships. That's okay, they're all on there somewhere. So if you have a difficulty, how are these two gonna connect? Now they're gonna connect a lot with their minds. So the masculine energy is, tends to be more in the head than the heart. And the feminine energy is more in the heart than in the head. And the mixture is the enlightenment. Pauline, can some people, since we're talking mostly about women, can some women be both? Oh yes, yeah. And for instance, um, I'll show you in a minute some examples, but I would put um, a good example of here, and I've got it later, is Oprah Winfrey. And what's really interesting is there's an underlay here on body shapes, and the African body shape is actually very central, which means it's wise on both agendas. You know, can be more masculine, more feminine, but it's not the extremes. Okay, so if you're in the middle, it doesn't mean you do everything. It would be like <laughs> trying to do everything and getting uh, burnt out. Um, but I tell you one of the things that happens here with clients, um, they often say to me, oh yeah, my friends say they never know how to take me. Because sometimes I'm more masculine and sometimes I'm more feminine. Whereas if you're at the extremes, you're very much one way, yeah? So I hope you're thinking about where you are on that grid because you can put yourself on there and look at this. So these two, they're sharing, but they're very much more direct, they're more into action. And maybe the classic relationship, which is the masculine male, the ruler, and the feminine female, the princess, or the sovereign, who now is in business. There tends to be a bit of a uh, territorial bit down here. Um, whereas this, this woman is kind of, um, I don't really become a com comedian called Catherine Tate, which is, oh, can I be bothered? Can I be bothered? You know, that's the kind of attitude of that. So everybody's chattering away and talking too much, and I'm just going to get on with action. Um, and then you've got the relationship between women, which is one of the things I'm really looking at because I get asked it by women. It's like, do we always lift us up? I saw you shake your head. <laughs> but it's a delicate subject to talk about. And I want to ask you, because I don't think men have a problem talking to other men, do they? No. No. Generally, I mean, you know. But men don't often talk about their feelings to other men. No. My husband does, but he's, he's more of an MF, though. Yes. But I, and, and I've been, inter like I've been interviewing a lot of the uh, so uh, how you feel. Now a lot of these guys say that, yeah, they're confused about women, but they have trouble with a room full of these. So the really intuitive, gentle guys, and I suspect you're an intuitive, gentle guy, is he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you were suddenly thrown into a room with high testosterone MMs, it doesn't, it, 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 you have to raise to their game rather than, and this is what a lot of them say. So I think, you know, that in the boardroom, maybe they hide away. Anyway, the, the conversations can keep on going. And I want you to think about, A, where you are and how those conversations work. And in my experience, and I'll just throw this out, in families, often if you've got two boys or two girls, you'll have one of each. And in my family, this worked out. My brother, my older brother's here, my younger brother's there, my sister's there, and I'm there. And it really explained to me why we were at odds when we were under pressure. Yeah. You were not in there. <laughs> She's talking about her brothers. <laughs> why do we need to know this? Because you might say, yeah, okay, that's all well and good. It's because you can manage them differently. You speak to them differently. You speak to them differently. You, sure. you, you don't overpower this guy with, yeah, but listen to me, listen to me. Yeah, look, I really want you to understand my feelings. And he's going, what? Say what? <laughs> <laughs> my, my son is there. My son is here. And he said, I've really learned to understand, to limit conversation. My son is here. So when he says, you know, Mom, I've had enough of talking about your business, I, it stresses me. I go, that's mm -hmm. fine. Change the subject to another box. 
and you're fine. <laughs> With my daughter, it's I true. can't do that. I've got to get into the emotional side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it's still doable. <laughs> when it's all still else <laughs> fails, drama works. <laughs> I give you a quick trip to tip: with if you are facing up to an MM, do not face face up. Sit beside him. Really try it. That's interesting. Sit beside him. Have the content of what you want to talk about in front of you, so you can glance at him, but don't. Attack him with that. Huh. Because he won't like it. Because it'll be a challenge. It's too much of a challenge, and if you really want to win, it'd be more strategic and subtle about it. Interesting. So you're placing the issue, both of The best place to do it is in a car if he's driving, because then you're both <laughs> <laughs> And I tried this on my son, it worked really well. Um, and they're just sort of little classic things like I remember my older brother, who's a lovely guy, and he's salt of the earth, he's got five children, he's very family, and he's now 70 something, but when my mum was not very well, and she was in hospital, I came to visit her one day, and she said, oh, Michael was here yesterday, and he just fell asleep. I said, what? So I, I tackled my mum, I said, why did, you, why did you do that? He said, I wasn't asleep, I just had my eyes shut. <laughs> <laughs> and I was listening to her, but of course there was no interaction, and my mother, typical woman, wanted this interaction. Mm -hmm. And he just couldn't, he said, no, I was doing my job. He was absolutely 100% convinced that he was doing the right thing. If you ask men whether they appreciate women, they will 99% 99 of the time say, I do. Most women think that men don't appreciate them, because they don't say it in the way that we want to hear it. It's not that they don't appreciate us, they do it in a box. That's interesting. Yeah? And I've, I've proved that again and again with clients. And I had one guy who said to me, okay, I get that, get that, okay. How long do I have to do that for? <laughs> <laughs> See, men are very practical and they're very instructional. I said, well, try it for like 20 minutes. Said, oh, okay. Like, if I can get a win out of it, I will try doing something. And that's one of the things that we've got to let go of our crying need to change them and make them more emotional than they are. They are truly emotional and all the men I've interviewed have said we just want to be us. We want to be valued for who we are because we like working with women but we're simple, we're straightforward, we're not complex like you guys. So I think that we've got to a stage now in our evolution where we need to just let go and be ourselves and be strategic with them. Okay, so how do you relate? I want you to remember boxes and circles. You, you can try lots of circles, but if they glaze over and stop listening, then try a few straight lines. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, remember, it's masculine minded. I'm not saying that women are masculine. I get this a lot. I'm saying they're masculine minded. Mm -hmm. So I'm all female. Okay, so it's the use of the words. And I know we get a lot of things about the feminine divide and feminists and all this stuff. but. We're truly female, and I've chosen those words particularly because it's biological. Um, and then the feminine-minded is more intuitive, so remember that. So I'm looking at this as a circle, and actually I use animals to describe. So I've decided that men are bears, and which you, I hope, will uh, buy my book if you haven't got it already. <laughs> but there's a story at the back, and it's about the bears and the birds. And it's interesting because I very often get men saying, I really like that story, more often than women. So think about that. I call men bears because they're very solid. They're very grounded, they're strong, and the brown bear can be trained. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one in the circus that, you know, if you see a circus bear, they're usually a brown bear. Mm -hmm. Now there aren't that many bears to choose from, but there are lots and lots of birds. Now, whether you know, anybody know anything about the pelican? Do you know why it's got this huge beak? It feeds collectively. Oh. So it, it, it gathers food, and they all gather food, and then they don't eat the food, they bring it back. It it's kind of illustrates to me that, you know, what you're saying, Amy, is in, in, um, in the tribes, we used to sit, and we were the nurturers, we were the, we would always feed. They always say that if women ran the world, there'd be no 
hungry people, but there are a lot of countries not talking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> so the pelican is an illustration of that core of it. Now, how does the conversation work between a bear and a pelican? The bears are very strong, but the birds can fly. Mm. So you can imagine the scenario when the, the bear's been sent out to find water and he's walking down the, and he's got the bird with him and he's commanding the way. He said, I know where it is. I know where it is because I'm a bear. And they go on for a day and they can't find it. And the tribe's back there gasping for water. And eventually the bird persuades the bear that they might go and look themselves. So they fly off and they find there's a water hole just there. And they come back and say, it's where they. Now that's an illustration of, we are very, very multiple. We see multiple alternatives. And I think sometimes men in the boardroom get a bit scared about that. But we are part of the equation now. And the future, and for those younger than me, the future, which is yours, it needs to understand that. So let's just put some other bears in. So the grizzly bear is your president. There you are. See? <laughs> and most of the bears went. And of course, there's the panda, the eagle, and the macaw, just as illustrations. But in an exercise, when we do this in a workshop, you could be at 100 different birds, because there are 100 different birds out there. So what do you think about what kind of bird you are? Now, we can all act as all those birds. The idea with the metaphor is that birds are very flexible. We can fly around. And in here, I talk about there's two cities. So the city of business was built by the bears. For 200 plus millenniums, yes. And we came in, what, less than 100 years, years ago. Yeah. And we've done huge amounts. <laughs> And we've increased our presence and we've been very educated. We've been educated and we're out there and we're running our own businesses and we're networking and we're doing everything. But we're not in all the power positions. And it's about looking at the bigger picture. So I call the MM the ruler. He's a classic scenario. Um, but the FM is more of a philosopher. The MF is more of a magician and the FF is more of a sovereign. Now all these characters are good when they're enlightened and we need them all around the table. When they're not enlightened, they can be very bad, all of them. So the ruler can be a bully and the philosopher can be a bit of a wimp seen by the other guys. The sovereign can be a bit of a victim and the magician can be a bit of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> now, our negative behaviour patterns, if you're a behaviourist, our negative behaviours are when we're under stress. So when we're under stress, we go to our corner, as I say. So what you can be aware of in a difficult situation, are you being a victim or a bitch? And where's the other person? Depending on whether it's another woman or it's a man, where is it? I'll give you a real life example. I had a client here. She was invited by a professor to come and meet an expert doctor. She was an ex-nurse, now CEO of a charity. He was one of those expert male doctors who didn't really approve of women being at the top, let alone a nurse. And she really didn't want to go. She said, I really don't want to do this. But he was pleading with her because he knew that she would help alleviate the strain between the two of them. So I said, okay, be strategic. When he starts talking, what would you do? So what is an MM likely to do? He's an expert at his subject matter. His sentence will start with, Hi. 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 Mm. Yes. <laughs> you know the guy. Oh, I know. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. Oh. I'm an expert. I'm an expert. I'm an expert. Now the challenge is that often women go, yes, but actually da 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 and that's not what he wants. So what does he want? No, I don't know. He wants to be validated. <laughs> he yeah. wants to be validated. Yeah. I think so, he wants mirrored. He wants her to say, "That's awesome. That's, wow. that's true." Yeah. How well, you don't that? have to go over the top, <laughs> <laughs> but it's important to say. I hear what you're saying. Uh, could I summarize, please? Absolutely. One, two, three. He hears you being very astute, understanding with, and that you listen to him. Yeah, and he doesn't need a lot more. And then you can turn to this guy and say, "How does that feel?" How do you, wow. you know, because. We're just tuning in like we would to visual kinesthetic or auditory. We're, we're, we're tuning in to what the needs are. And I think that's the battle in the boardroom. I did this recently with some senior sort of management people and they, 
when we did the exercise about how would you deal with the MM here, they all had somebody in mind, Prusad, a real person in their life. And the FFs all said, oh, well, we'll stop chattering and, and don't be too emotional. And all of the MFs said, oh, we tackle him. <laughs> Both of which are not really <laughs> enough. <laughs> because once we are strategic with him, we can draw everybody in. Where does that put us as women? At the bottom. Puts us at the top. Oh. Oh, if you go along with him? No, no. If you, what I mean was, if you go into that room, so in the room, you've got some grizzly bears, you've got some pandas, you've got, you know that there's, wherever you are as a woman, there's a, if you can manage a magical conversation with everybody oh, in the room, okay. without saying how you've done it, so you summarize to him, you ask his feelings, you do whatever it is you need, you will be the, the top persona, the top professional. And that's what I believe that we need to do as women. And we need to have more numbers in there for sure. So I met a top woman who was actually on Richard Branson's board for five years, a shareholder board. 12 people, only one woman. And she said it was fascinating, but it was just too limiting because it's out of balance. So the goal for me is that we get to 50-50, obviously, but if we can get to 60-40 or whatever, but it has to be the right kind of conversation. But is that feeding his ego, like kind of? Um... It's temporarily, it's not feeding his ego, because as, as I said here, you don't go, oh, 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 oh. You just, just use those terms. Like, but you, you do say, you know, like, ask his ego, is that what you're talking about? Like kissing his butt? No, you're mirroring. No, because yeah. it sounds like kind of just telling you're him just what he saying, wants to hear. I hear you. I hear you. It's actually acknowledging him yeah. for yeah. what his gift is, okay. which is to be in that box. Right. Now, see, if you have an enlightened ruler, there's a place for all of these. Okay. You know, and yeah. I want you to think about the best value of these people. Is that we we want all of these characters to be in our world because they are in our world. That's <laughs> that's the, the sort of mediator magic mix to me is that they've all got a function um, and in fact you would tend to find that you know when you look at the operation to finances marketing all the, the okay. all the things that you need in a business mm -hmm. they'll come from different character traits and different gifts around the table I heard an interesting um, was it Sharon Sandberg I can't remember but I heard it the other day it was a LinkedIn kind of a podcast and um, it was a board of I think maybe it was Google I'm not sure but it was 12 uh, people on the board and the woman said uh, when you have one person you know but when you have one woman on the board people go okay you know that's the token female you have two women on the board you know you're you're fulfilling you know what you have to do to, to make your audience happy yeah. your your base you have three women on a board of 12 now you're starting to change the culture that's right and that's what happened with the example I told of this woman who went in and made a coffee. She was the only woman on the board, so it was a challenging situation. And also, it is about women getting along with other women, and I, I've got a, a real passion about that. So let me just show you some examples which you know. I, you, I know you know these characters. <laughs> yeah? You know these characters? <laughs> now you look at, and I'm sure you've all seen yeah. the series. <laughs> But it, it plays out. Joey is very singular minded. We know what he's singularly minded about, as is Phoebe, actually. Mm -hmm. um, Chandler was always that, I don't know quite how to be with the guys. And then when he fell in love with Monica, who was the tough woman there, he didn't really want to tell the boys. He didn't want to get away from anyone. As we know what happened in the series, mm -hmm. these two in the middle were always kind of going both ways. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, am, I, am I, you know, am I tough? Do I want to be loved? Da 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 da. And Ross was the same. There's a really good example of playing out these things. If we look at celebrities, I've just put these guys on because I just think, <laughs> and I say Oprah is very balanced. Um, Meryl Streep, again, a fabulous feminine, female, feminine female who plays all those roles and becomes those roles incredibly. So you could also think about uh, how you put people around. So I've got another one that's not here, but this is uh, Elton John and David. Ellen DeGeneres and Portia. So you can put anybody around there. And the goal is that we're all on one map. 
So I get a lot of very good response from the LBGT community because they want to actually be on the same map because this is about behaviour and communication and getting it right. <coughs> okay, does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the magical conversation has to go back to that cycle. If we actually know who we are and you can layer in all the other aspects that you want to talk about, like race and culture, necessity of religion, whatever it is, we still got to remember that this is the only place we can be true to ourselves. And we need to understand where the difficulty breaks down the relationship. Are we seeking to understand and to be able to be understood? There's a lot more in that, but in terms of business, it's about individual benefits, relationship benefits and business. And that's where I start looking at when I go into businesses, if we get that mixture right, and that's where at the moment the top isn't balanced, and the mandate to put one woman in the board is not really that useful. I mean, it is a good start, but we need to make it different. But if you look at the, the businesses that are growing, uh, the entrepreneurial businesses that have grown and are growing, and if you don't follow her, I really I suggest you follow Sarah Blakely. Because do you know who Sarah Blakely is? Thanks. Sarah Blakely is Thanks. Banks. And she is putting some master glasses out, and she's really amazing because she's she never had investors. Yeah. The creator of Spanx, is that what yeah. you're talking about? She's never had investors in. She's always had, she's got a mixed workforce that is very autonomous, gender balanced, and she treats them, and she and Bridget Branson are great friends. They have a similar ethos. So you look at those models, are those the models of the future that we want, as opposed to the, the stock traditional ones? That, mm -hmm will have to change, and they, they will change. So remember, as you go into a conversation, is think about your good intentions. Think about where you would place yourself on that, and how you would place other people who are close to you. You can do that when you get home. But just think about where is the difference between me and that person, and what kind of conversations do I have? There's obviously a lot more to this, and, and what I've done in my book is I put in the philosophy. So there are things in here around how we build our relational quotient. How do you relate? How do you react? How do you take risk? How do you take responsibility? There's some examples of illustrations that work. Um, how do you develop your own value creation uh, strength, if you like? You'll still come across difficult people but remember, they're not difficult, they're just a difficult situation. And it's because of, if we don't value our differences, we're not gonna know what the difference is. And you start valuing somebody else's uh, attributes and their gifts, and I don't mean, you know, bowing down to them, but just being okay about saying to somebody, gosh, I really value that you're like this, and I'm different, and have that conversation, 